Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for the 30th of April 2019. And what I'm going to be doing today is a uh, very basic cripple or egg laying uh, caddis pattern. Um, this is kind of my preferred slick water or flat water caddis and a tractor, uh, downwing attractor pattern. Uh, this is, if you look through kind of some of my other videos, I have my Clacka Caddis and my uh, my Double Wing, the Synth Double Wing. And the Synth Double Wing is sort of the big brother, the Clacka Caddis is sort of the middle brother, and then this one is sort of the little brother. I'm going to typically use this pattern in uh, lower water conditions, flatter water conditions, um, shallower sections of rivers where the fish are spookier. And I'm going to tie that both in imitative colors and also in attractor colors. I tie that in uh, peacock, pink, red, purple, uh, black, and then, uh, you know, your standard olive caddis, which uh, for the Mother's Day caddis hatch, which is imminent. Um, so this would be a good one with kind of a slightly darker wing and a darker olive body, and a, probably a grizzly hackle. Uh, do it in you know your tan caddis, your typical summer caddis, and that's probably the the color I use the most. And then this one is um, for the nectopsyche caddis, which is the uh, blonde caddis common on the Firehole River. And uh, you know it, certainly you could tie this version of it for the Firehole, but more importantly, it's more of a uh, basic recipe for uh, a good simple attractor style caddis. I'm going to tie this in sizes 12 through 18 with uh, 16 certainly being the sweet spot. And this is a pretty easy fly so I'm not even going to bother stopping the camera. I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. And so my hook on this one is going to be a uh, Montana Fly Company 7004 size 16 and that's just your typical short shank dry fly hook. My thread is uh, 80 and this one is uh, cream. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever color to match your specific caddis. I'm going to start that thread and then lay a full thread base down to the bend here. And on this particular color I use, uh, you know, you can use whatever color dubbing, whatever kind of dubbing you want, essentially, on this fly. On this color for the firehole caddis, I'm using, uh, John Romer's Arizona Synthetic Peacock in, uh, the color golden. And this stuff is kind of a pain in the butt to dub. Um, it's very, it's both very short fiber and kind of coarse. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to very, not loosely, but I'm going to very sparsely dub that onto the thread here. And, and like I was trying to hopefully make clear, this is something I only have to do on this particular color. If you're using normal dubbing, you could probably just dub this normally. But I'm going to kind of dub that as tight as I can get it, which isn't very tight, but also very thinly. Uh, hopefully that's that's clear enough. I'm going to start at the back here and wrap just a single layer of that forward to about there and then back again to kind of get the full you know width of dubbing I want for the body and I, I do want the dubbing relatively scraggly but that's you know extra scraggly there's that's a lot of that's just going to come off and so what I'm going to do here is kind of the last stage in making the body is I'm just going to spiral that thread through and that does a couple things. Number one, it's going to bind down the dubbing a little better. Number two, um, the, the that caddis uh, that I'm tying this particular color for on the fire hole has a uh, very pale kind of wing, but the, the body is sort of a creamy golden olive. And so wrapping that cream thread back through there kind of reinforces that, that uh, cream color and so gives me that three-dimensional kind of color. Wing on this fly is going to be Montana Fly Company Widow's Web in beige. And the attractor colors, I'll typically tie it in either white, beige, or polar bear. Um, this caddis has a pretty pale wing, and so I'm using the beige. More commonly, I'd use caddis tan if I'm tying an imitative caddis pattern. So I'm going to start that pretty close to the eye here and just get a couple of good wraps with that whole bunch of... Uh, fibers on top of the hook there and I'm going to come in with my my hook point here and just kind of split that and this is basically the same thing I did on the uh, the uh, ant a couple weeks ago but I'm going to continue wrapping back here I'm going to hold that split like that and then I'm going to just wrap back to the front edge of the front edge of the body there and so that'll leave me with a wing that looks like that and then I'm going to take that 
and trim it about half a gape past the end of the uh, hook shank there and those are going to splay back out. They won't be a perfect V but you can kind of see how that's concentrated more on one side than the other. And if they're, they come out a little bit uneven, which it actually looks like I trimmed that a little crooked there, no problem. That just, if anything, reinforces the crippled nature of that fly. Um, this basic pattern, um, you know, I'm tying it with different materials and so forth, but the basic pattern is by Blue Ribbon Flies. And I actually bought some of these from them when I first learned about the pattern. And uh, some of the ones I bought, the wings were quite different in length, actually, like they trimmed them separately. But anyway... Brought that thread back just behind the uh, kind of leftovers from tying in the wing there. I'm just going to take a couple turns behind that to kind of keep everything together. I'm not actually turning that into a parachute post or anything like that. Uh, but that just going to kind of keep that post together and I'm going to wind up using the tag end here to create my uh, head. I'm going to super glue that uh, hackle in place. Now I don't really need super glue to keep the wing in place here, just those extra thread wraps I did just around the post there. On this one I actually don't need the glue as reinforcement like I do on a lot of my synthetic wing flies, but uh, you know, I put it in there to kind of reinforce the hackle tie-in point and uh, you know, a little, little extra reinforcement never hurt anything. So I'm going to wrap that with the, uh, I tied that in with the concave side facing me and then I'm going to make, there's two three, four complete turns, and I'll typically do either four or five on this fly, um, certainly five on the bigger ones, certainly four on the smaller ones, and then I'm going to bring that up just ahead of that post, did not make a turn in front of the post there, there's a quick turn, there's another one, trim the excess there, and then grab my whip finisher, Kind of pull everything back, make a whip finish over the top there, and then trim my thread, trim that one fiber I grabbed with that last turn on my whip finish, and then the final step in preparing the final steps in preparing the fly. I'm going to pull that uh, clump of fibers down and then give it a haircut uh, just ahead of the eye there, and then, so that kind of gives it you know an elk hair caddis looking uh, head. And then the final thing I'm going to do is give it a haircut underneath here. So this can be a low riding pattern since it's relatively sparsely hackled. And, uh, you know, and then I trim the hackle underneath. But it can also skate a little bit since I've got that post. And if you've ever fished the fire hole, you've seen that particular caddis skate quite a bit. But, of course, any caddis pattern is worth skating a little. So there you have a, a basic caddis cripple. And... Uh, tie these to match your local caddis as well as in assorted detractor colors. As I said, I like it in pink, um, especially on bright days. I like it with a peacock body, uh, especially on dark days. Um, Blue, Rib Blue Ribbon Flies ties this as a, uh, as a trude variation, you know, with a red band in the middle. Uh, that's certainly worth a shot, but uh, have fun with it. That's a good basic pattern, obviously very quick to tie, just three materials. As always, thanks for watching and have a good week. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and uh, look forward to fishing with some of you this summer.